Hello everybody! Welcome back to Dungeon of the Mad Mage. This is session 129! Where the fuck Wait, is the time going? Pew, 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 My goodness gracious. Uh, it feels like it was we were in the 60s just yesterday. Um, we are missing a Zach tonight. Um, so we are uh, Sands of Bones. This is going to be a little bit experimental. Oh, it's been a while since we have tried playing without someone. Uh, we used to do that like way, way back in the day, but uh, we have not done that in a long while. Um, but we had a stint there where we didn't play for like a month and a half, two months uh, because of, you know, sickness and, and uh, work and stuff like that. So we're trying to avoid having that happen right now. However, there's some pretty intense stuff going on at the moment. So um, if things start to get a little too close to something that I feel might be very important for Bones to be involved in or be very bone centric um we'll probably go ahead and call the episode at that point so this could be a normal full-length episode depending on what the party decides to do or it might be a 45 minute episode we're gonna see how it goes um we're just gonna kind of uh, play how by long here. the video is right exactly so you know we'll see we'll see what happens anyways without further ado Let's go ahead and get things started with a, not a little bit of a recap. There's a pretty big <laughs> recap this time around. <laughs> Some stuff happened. So, previously in the Dungeon of the Mad Mage, the party found themselves once more facing down the living form of Hexakali within the memory fragment on floor eight of the dungeon. But things were different this time. The Yuan-T forms they inhabited were no longer weakened, no longer unsure. The serpentine fetishes the party had attuned to were the missing piece of the puzzle. And now, the battle could play out as it was meant to be. Now resistant to the Naga's freezing magics and regenerating what little harm was done to them, the party was able to methodically cut Hexakali down. But she was still an immortal and the party knew not what the next step would be. But their counterparts did. As Hexikali began her death throes, the Nightmare Speaker pulled forth an urn, and the memories of its creation were revealed to the party. The black candle they had found, the altar, the urns beneath it, all of it was to create this, a soul jar, specifically designed to trap Hexikali's immortal soul. But it needed something. A spirit within to grapple, to bind the soul it devoured for all eternity. In order to create this jar, a sacrifice had been made. Hexakali howled as the jar was revealed, her scales and flesh peeled away from her bones and sucked into the jar along with her soul. All that was left was her skeleton. A pile of animate bones that writhed with malicious intent. A bone naga had been born. The Vrail readied themselves to fight against this new threat. They were prepared. The Malison drew forth a ritual dagger designed to enchant the bone naga, weakening its formidable defenses and allowing for its defeat. But the party knew that this was not how things ended. And they saw the moment when the forces of the Sethian scourges rallied against the Vrail and defeated them. Excrutha and Seraketh came to their sister's aid too late to save her immortal soul, for the Nightmare Speaker had sent the jar containing Hexakali away, realizing that if it was acquired by the remaining two scourges, all would have been for naught. The Vrail were butchered on that day and the few that remained could only mount a token defense against the Scourges for a brief while longer. But, Exakali had been made mortal. The Scourges were now two, instead of three. As the memory faded, the party found themselves back in their bodies once more, with quite a bit of information. They returned to the temple, to the inner sanctum, and verified what they had learned. There were three more jars that could be prepared. But... The issue was the need for sacrifice. 
The party as a whole was not in favor of the idea of consigning someone to this fate for all eternity, especially not their newfound allies. So they sought to figure out a way around this requirement. But first, they handled what they were sure about. The ritual for creating the enchanted dagger had been revealed to them in the memory. The dagger would be useful in defeating the Queen of Bones and the Scourges once their souls were trapped. The party had been quite close in their experimentations originally with the statue of Seth earlier on. Bones set Windspike within the jaws of the statue, placed the venom of the Vrail within the receptacles, and the statue closed its jaw. Magical pressure surged within, and Windspike was enchanted once more. But at that moment, the statue cracked, rending the skull of the serpent down the center. The party had enchanted a dagger for the purposes of fighting the Bone Nagas, but only one. Still, it was progress forward. But the Soul Jars were still a concern. Matashtai had an idea, though. If it just required a willing spirit, perhaps Yoastel, the yuan Ti ghost that had been out for vengeance against the Scourges, would help them. Matashtai and Ashes headed to find the spirit. Meanwhile, Ezra spent time studying the altar and the inner sanctum. Matashtai and Ashes had little luck in finding Yoastel, though, let alone convincing her to help. Ashes eventually led the two men in a sort of seance, and with the help of Zalara, he was able to make brief contact with Yoastel. But the ghost was too weak to accomplish anything, and it faded away. The ghost the, gave up the ghost. The ghost gave up the ghost. In the meantime, Ezra had invited Izu, who arrived with Risk, to discuss the ritual and potential alternatives. The Bullywog Warlock had few opinions on alternatives, though she insisted there were always different methods. But what she did have opinions on were that the Black Tongue tribe not be told about the sacrifice part, especially not Cass or Ask who she believed would give themselves over immediately to the detriment of the tribe. After some discussion, Risk addressed the gathered individuals and summed up where the party was at. They would investigate alternatives for the willing sacrifices for the jars within the Slither Swamp and other locations if need be. The Black Tongue tribe had survived this long. It could survive a while longer especially now that it presented a unified front. And, once the party returned, if they could find no other way, then the Black Tongue tribe would be told, and it would be allowed to make the choice it believed best for itself. There was wisdom, wisdom, wisdom in Risk's words, but it was not a wisdom that Izu wanted to hear. The young warlock stormed out, and Bones and Ezra perhaps saw Risk face heartbreak in that moment. Not long after, Matashtai and Ashes arrived with the unfortunate news that they had failed to retrieve Yoastel's aid. The party was running out of options. And that is where we fade back into the scene. Um, you all are still within the inner sanctum of the temple of the Vrail Olo. Um, Matashtai and Ashes, you saw Izu storming out of the temple past you as you were entering in. Um, Risk is kind of standing there looking forlorn, um, in, in Izu's wake, just staring off, uh, the direction that she has passed. Um, what is it you all would like to do? What happened with her? Um, she clearly doesn't like the idea of uh, giving them a chance to, to suicide themselves, I think. Uh, I mean, yeah. You, I wouldn't want any of y'all to sacrifice yourselves either. You, and uh, it's more than it's more than just sacrifice. It's sacrifice, and an eternal duty. Risk kind of like gives this little throaty croak, and he says, 
I understand her pain. But she does not get to make the choices for everyone else. Well, <clears throat> like we said, uh, we're, we're we're going to we're going to look for some alternatives before before committing to anything. Chris that looks drastic. over at you almost as if, almost as if someone was waiting for uh, that statement, and he goes, "What alternatives?" Well, um, Bones here had an idea that. If we took hey a guys, willing... Bones here. Hey guys, Bones here. Yeah, hey guys, Bones here. This is how he talks. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I do I do imagine Bones being a little bit of like a, a YouTube uh, personality though. Like, hey yo, it's your boy Bones. Back at you with, you know. Like... But first, let's thank today's sponsor. <laughs> don't you... Please. <laughs> don't even say the name. Don't don't inv invoke that on my stream. My name. I've got like eight. <laughs> Which no. one? Yeah. Which one's the one that triggers you, Jeremy? I I think it's the the legends. Yeah. The, <laughs> yep. the, the shadowy rage. rage. Shadow Look, <laughs> at least the other ones. Many of the other ones are at least legitimate products. Like. I mean, Raid Shadow Legends is a legitimate pro product. You can access it on your phone. There's a cool leveling <laughs> progression. Can this not be a promotion no, for Raid no, Shadow no, Legends? No, like, no, what's no, going no, on here? Android. It, it, Why so is this happening? Right now, with 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 the with backslash. Code, I realize. Horizon. I realize this is just horizon. panic. I realize this is my players going. Oh shit! We don't. This is not going to last an hour. Let's fill it in. Let's fill it in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, fuck. So. Bones had the idea that we could take a willing sacrifice from many people uh, instead of the entirety of life from one person to see if that would suffice. So Chris kind of cocks his head and croaks at you and says, looks over at Ezra, if it needs a soul, how will that help? This is uncharted territory. I, the soul could just be a magical compound. It, it, the the will within the blood could be enough. I, I this this is dark stuff. This is stuff I don't have. Uh, EC eleven. What? Uh oh. Eat it. Risk is not a uh, risk is not a smart boy. He's a sturdy boy. He's a wise boy. He's a, oh, that was a caring minus boy. One. That's a minus <laughs> one. <laughs> oh no. Um, um. But risk, you know, risk knows where he's from. He knows who his people are. He knows as much as any of them know what his people are. He says, What about our souls being unique? The reincarnation with the stone. Well, I don't understand all this shit, but what do you mean? Like, what? What would it change? I, I don't I, know. I mean, I, I, uh, he said we were in uncharted territory. Uh, right, but I mean, regardless if we take one person's soul who's living, or we take a reincarnated soul that's still in the stone, that's still ultimately a soul well, going if, into the jar for eternity, right? But what if the soul goes in and they trap, and then the stone kicks him back out of the jar. The 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 so 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 if we even jump in this theory, I every element of this type of magic, from what we have learned, has been entirely 
willing and pointed or targeted pulling a a spirit or a soul out of your your spawning stone if that's even a, a possibility that they're they're not willing or pointed in this effort just kind of whereas whereas with bones's idea if uh, a number of people offer drops of blood with the intent and knowledge that this can help further the progress towards defeating uh, uh, Excrutha and Sarakath. Maybe that's that that maybe the will is what we need to cling to rather than the soul. I, I, I again. The soul has been brought up significantly. That willingness and targeted intent has been brought up. I, we could go one direction or the other and, and find success rather than the example that has been laid down before us. Risk nods at you, right? Like, this is, this is over his head, but what you're saying makes sense to him. He kind of just grunts and he says... Maybe with the blood being ours and our souls being a little different, maybe it'll be the extra bit. So here's the thing, right? So, no, no, I was thinking, like, if, if we're to... If the spawning stone works the way I think it does, right? If we did have a bullywug give his soul to the jar, right? And then the then the spawning soul is like, no, I claim all souls to be reincarnated. Wouldn't that just n null and void the jar? Uh, Ezra, roll me an arcana check. DC... Variable DC, but we'll say uh, base DC 15. 24. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, that sounds about right to, to your, like, if by some, you know, like, some types of magic can get away with being tricksy, right? Like, being kind of a cheat, uh, but soul magic, like, I, I don't want to be like, Full Metal Alchemist over here or anything like that, but there's there's a certain oh, cool. level of like exchange that has to happen. So this, this is a willing. What what? Yeah, it, there's definitely that, but it's also the mechanism, the design that you right. There's there's the potential that different magic in a different design could absolutely do what Ashes had kind of just like mentioned there. Mm -hmm. But the way these jars have des been designed from what you have seen, the way the Vrail established this ritual is for a willing soul to bind, Amen. to hold to that other soul yeah. for all eternity, right? Okay. Um, and if that the soul doing the binding, the soul doing the holding is suddenly gone, then there's nothing there to bind the, the target soul in place. So... On a 24, right, the DC being a 15, you definitely, yeah, that that probably would not work, right? Like that would that wouldn't be a, a quick hack to yeah, it would it would be yeah. you got the soul you got the bullywug soul in there, probably the stone would just yoink it out before you could even do anything else. But if for some miracle it didn't, when you did get the naga soul in there. As soon as the stole the stone decided to yoink it out, that Naga soul is probably gone, right? Yeah. So yeah. here's the thing. On a twenty-four, right. though. Okay. Talking about this does <clears throat> maybe spark something else in Ezra's mind, and that is the spawning stone itself. Oh, maybe not the no. Bullywug souls. But that stone is a conduit for soul magic. It literally pulls the Bullywug souls back into it 
to be reincarnated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A soul mage, or someone specializing in that type of magic, could probably figure out how to reverse engineer that in a manner that might help you guys. You might be able to do it, but that is not your area of expertise. Um, and that Wait, would be. It's not? I thought I thought souls was my entire. Expertise. That would be a bit of a. If only Kethra were here. Whatever you yeah, say, she drops in from the sky. Kethra, Kethra would literally just be like, "Yo, I got one of these in my pocket. Here you go, buddy. Boom." Um. um hey, uh, Riss, y'all got anyone that uh talks with the dead and uh communicate with them in any way? Kind of shrugs. He says, "Cope when necessary, and speak to the spirits. Perform some augury." Because uh, I just had the idea. We had the two guardians here. We don't necessarily necessarily know if the spirit has to be alive when it agrees to bond. So I maybe... Mean, I mean, at least what, what Ashes was trying, that was very much not the case. Technically, Metastizer idea original, but yes. But, oh, yes, yes. But so, maybe if we can communicate with those two guardians, I mean, they spent a hell of a long time guarding this temple. Again. That's assuming their souls are still encased in their... I'm not making any assumptions. I'm just saying it's something we could try. Kind of nods at you. We could ask Culp to try to see if there are any spirits lingering. That is that too risky, though, explaining to Culp the situation? Because without that information, is he going to know what what he's looking for or what he's asking? Risk kind of looks um, at you. Um, I'll talk with him. I think we can trust Cole to keep a secret. I mean, I'm I'm looking at Risk. Just uh, yeah, a, I think I think Matashta, you weren't actually here for this part of the conversation. So so Risk nods at you and he says, you "Can trust Cole, but Izu is right." He is old. He knows he is old. He will see an opportunity to serve the tribe one last time as a fitting in his life. We should be cautious about why we need his assistance. But asking him to come and see if there are some spirits so you can ask them questions would be fine asking him to come and see if there are spirits and then him still being around while you ask them to offer their immortal souls to trap the scourges might be a giveaway i'm not sure how we would uh communicate yeah, once sure the souls that, we, we need to uh... yeah he, he kind of nods that's the point he's making he's like <laughs> all right Ugh. all right we can tell him that the jar needs an already deceased spirit that feels like an easy thing for them to accomplish <laughs> i feel like Ashes. bones is over here in the corner and he goes yeah matt you gotta leave you can't lie like this get out of here <laughs> well, uh, Bones just hits Matt with the know. paladin treatment. Yeah, get out of here, but not before checking out today's sponsor. Raid the Shadow Legends. <laughs> Download it today. Look, at, at the end of the day, I'm not going to tell people they can't do something. It's their choices, their lives, right? If Culp wants to make that choice, it's his to make. I'm not going to force anyone into it. But if we need his help to avoid other options, I, I think we we do that. Risk nods and he says the order of 
potential issues. So explore options that do not alert any of the black tongues. Then explore options that alert only select black tongues. Then fill the I mean we, we could at least we can at least start by going to ask our our ghost boy if he would like to uh, 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 volunteer his uh, tribute. Uh, two, two, two things. Two things. First and foremost, I want to reiterate that the ritual requires action while someone willingly sacrifices themselves. So if we bring it up to somebody who is gung-ho about slitting their damn necks... They need to be aware that if they just slit their damn necks in the basin without us doing the ritual, it's in vain. I want to make that abundantly clear. I don't want to walk in here to find some old frog strewn above the altar, dead, thinking he's helping. Why do and... I feel like Jake's talking to me, <laughs> not anybody else? <laughs> oh, I am now Ezra. Fear me. Aha! Aha! Does that make me the DM? I'm assuming Mitch is having some technical difficulties. Blaze. No, I am, I am a blood hunter. Rawr. Yeah. Apparently That's when me. Mitch leaves, Mitch is the DM. <clears throat> I returned. Welcome back, Mitch. Welcome back. Sorry, my headphones kept cutting out because they were still connected to my work laptop. So I had to turn my work laptop off. Hmm. Well, no worries. So, okay. Uh, what do we decide to do first? Uh, uh, so, 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 uh, uh, first and foremost, and no, Jeremy, this was not targeted at you. This was targeted more at Matashtai, who walked away as the the. I the walked away. My eyes went in the back of my head, and I stood here for a moment. He was talking to Valena. Yep. <laughs> the ritual, what we understand of the original ritual with the sacrifice requires an active element of choosing the the keyword and the binding of the jar so if we bring this to anyone else we need to be abundantly clear that walking in here and slitting your throat over the altar because you're doing a good deed without us doing the steps necessary Ask and Cast cannot do this on their own, basically. <laughs> yeah, even, even Culp, if if he thinks he's he's doing the the the, the greater good thing, Culp would at least be have a better chance if he's like trying some magic yep. mumbo jumbo along with it. But we need Ask to be and Cast definitely not. Abundantly clear, and I, I'm just trying to reiterate that that it's not just a, oh hey come in here and sacrifice yourself and yay it's all good and sunshine and rainbows and you saved everyone with your life. No, we, we have to be actively involved in a ritual to bind these jars and craft them through so, the appropriate all right, So magic. the ritual, so here's the thing, right? And, and and I don't know, maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree, but the ritual oof, is, oof, to, oof. is to get a living creature unalive, their soul out of their body and into the jar, right? That is what the ritual is for, right? That is the uh, the premises that we know from the oh, brand. So that's Olo what you have seen. Day. I think I think Ezra poking about though has been able to ascertain that there's a a myriad of different combinations that could happen, and the differing like what happens there have probably got differing chances of success. Like Matashtai's idea of going and finding Yoastel and and seeing if Yoastel would you know, volunteer as tribute is not identical to what you guys witnessed as like the concept of the memory, but would probably still work, right? It probably goes from like a hundred percent chance to like a 96% chance or something along, you know, like that type of situation. So there's probably, there's little variations that Ezra is sure you can do. And then there's a whole list of variations that Ezra's like, Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, 
the the uh, the the second thing, your your ghost friend. That is on an island with a monument to Dendar. Oh, that I... ghost friend. Yeah. That, no, I knew exactly what he was talking about. That ghost friend. We, we tried interacting with that spirit or image or whatever that was to no avail previously. The idol itself emanates dark magic and I think that is a very dangerous option bones parrots in the uh, corner you think everything's dangerous accurate <laughs> <laughs> <This> ectomancer of... <laughs> ectomancer get the fuck out of here oh shit the Dendar is an evil god. Dendar. Chris kind of like nod, like Cox has had it too and kind of like does the whole like weird stare, uh, kind of like yeah, moisture yeah, yeah, blinking I scenario, I know. right? I know. Um, he just says. Surface dwellers have such an interesting idea of what is what is this this god focuses on bringing your nightmares to life so yeah no I don't want that I'm afraid of everything he kind of oh, like he, he kind of like he contemplates for a second right and he's like but if he grants you the power to bring your enemies nightmares to life Are some things not worth it? Sounds like you're volunteering. He shakes his head and he, he walks out the fucking room. He's like, many fish, many fish. Many, many fish. Um, and you get, you get the, he's not like leaving, leaving. He's just going yeah. back outside the temple. He's like, he, he's said his piece. You guys are hashing some things out. He's going to go. He, he needs to walk some stuff off because he's had a, he's had a rough. This has been an emotional. Yeah. He's hour. had, he's had some rough moments over the last few. Uh, so. I, I just want to make it abundantly clear what you are suggesting Ash is and what could potentially be at stake if we go poking around a little bit too um, forcefully. I think I channel Zach well when I say, well, I mean, if it goes bad, we just kill him. Again. Forever? Second death. We kill a god? No, 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 no the ghost boy. I mean, Hold he's up. A, you think what? the god's gonna come to this tiny little swamp? You, you've never Bones' his eyes go of... whoop, and he goes, we think the god, can I... Snakes have bones. He's got, he suddenly got wind spike in his hand. <laughs> you can make a sweet snake whip. Have you never heard stories of avatars of deities coming down and? Okay, again, why do you think it's gonna come out of that one? There's statues to all sorts of gods up in Waterdeep, and we don't got avatars walking around. Well, this this is a sim a a idol to this particular god emanating dark energy. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know what it it, could do. Nash's temple of wolfiness had moonlight that lets them talk to swords. I mean... I mean, he's already been talking I, to that sword since before he went to... But it that, amplified their connection. That's kind of that's the reverse of dark energy. It's moon energy. Yeah, also, Saloon is a, a much more... Um, uh, Ashes, you, you hear in your head uh, from Zalara, you hear her just kind of chuckle, and she's just like, did he just call me the opposite of dark energy? Uh, um, yes. I'll take That's that. How he meant it. Yep. <clears throat> different right. different said, I'm fucking being careful. I don't think a god's going to pop out of that idol. I, 
I'm more worried that there is some trap that's going to suck your soul right out of your body and you're going to be another wandering spirit on that island. Bo more, Bone says right there at that point, it would be like, well, I mean, if that happens, we got a willing spirit. <laughs> you also cannot communicate with this spirit, so what makes you think you could communicate oh, with? Oh, yeah. Well, Shit. Forgot about that. it sounds like you're pretty against going to that one. I'm, and I'm not I'm too, very like, committed concerned. that it's going to do it, so let's not go there. <laughs> I am very concerned with that idea. And if, if you guys want to, that's fine. I'm just not comfortable stepping foot on that island because this 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 is not good stuff. This is. I think Bones at that moment goes, "Yo, uh, if we're just talking about like random spirits, do you think Karstus has any in his pocket?" Maybe. It's a good idea. Let's go ask him. I start walking out. Okay. I feel like Mitch has, Mitch has reached that point of please, dear God, move. Someone move. I just want to do something. <laughs> oh, we are you're... doing something. We're talking. You're talking. You talk talking. About the same thing we talked about two hours last time. <laughs> it's the it's the inevitable curse of uh of D and D. Right? Is is the figuring out what to do next? Okay. So as you guys are leaving. Right, Risk will kind of uh, um, walk off with you guys a little ways and just be like, is there anything you need me to do to start? You want me to gather people for this bloodletting? Do you need me to... What, what do you need done? Do, you, do, you, do we just want to give him a jar to collect? We have, we have to do it as... I assume we have to do it at the altar due to the contraption. You want me to and make arrangements for that? Is, like, is not, that not now, potential... not while you guys are gone, but like, you want me to start disseminating information and getting people ready once you return? I, I think that's a good idea. Um, keep information to a minimum, and Just... and and I'll I'll handle the rest eloquently and we'll go from there um he walks back over to the uh the handful of guards and um you know talks to them for a moment and the two of them <laughs> begin to hop their way through the swamp away to the wider outskirts of the black tongues territory um and then you guys are traveling Heading south, south, uh, west, um, past the the ruined temple where you, um, you know, you've met Yoastel. Uh, you can see the the Isle of the um, altar to Dendar, the Ouroboros statue in the distance to the northwest, where where uh, Ghosty Boy apparently was. Um, nope. Uh, you come to the tavern, uh, which leads down into the um, southwestern recesses of the Slither Swamp. Um, again, it's that scenario of like you're traveling through the sw Slither Swamp. There's the the heat, the mugginess of the swamp, the midges flying all around, buzzing, being an annoyance to you. Um, situations are going to, do I not have any situations? Situations are going to tick up. There they are. Motherfucker. Every single time I like type it back in, situations tick up to two. Because you guys have been just chatting and hanging out and moving around for a little while. Um, uh, so you guys are here. Um... Only been a day. Barely that. Actually, it has not been 24 hours since you left Karstus. I'm remembering now. Meaning. About that. Okay. Um, so, what are you guys doing? Uh, 
Would Ezra have an understanding of the cloud kill rune and its reset timer if the password needs to be... You you were told the password as you left, um, and the inference was you probably need to, to use the password every time. <laughs> as Ezra steps forward and in as commanding of a voice as he can uh, muster, he shouts, Silver Fox. Okay. Um... There's a very faint um, flash of bluish arcane energy in the central um, portion of the chamber before you, um, as there was when you made your way out the first time. Um, making your way. Making your way. And you guys are able to uh, head southwest into a room filled with corpses and bones and uh just the the signs of slaughter as you step in um matashtai you see on the edge of your vision a hulking form a mass of rotting flesh a oh uh, flesh golem it sees you and it goes uh, uh, um, uh, um, says, and, and, and you you immediately hear you immediately hear what oh no god no stop you stop you stop <laughs> <laughs> drop it and, and the golem the golem like mid step towards you just freezes and you see uh coming out of the darkness you see karstis who has a brand new uh brand new thingy mabobber he's got a new token because he didn't he didn't have a personalized token last time because i thought he was gonna die <laughs> so, wow you didn't kill him so you didn't kill him so so now he's got his own little token look at him being coming on up in the yeah. world yeah all right, anyways, uh, so you guys arrive, and Karstis, you know, settles the, the flesh golem down. Um, uh, Karstis welcomes you into his uh, laboratory, into, in, uh, into his laboratory, into his home away from home, into his um, detention center, into his uh, purgatory, into his little personal hell. Um as you guys kind of like come come on in right he he motions for you to follow he goes down into where his little section was um where his two tables set up now uh each one has a white uh laying upon it uh and they're in various stages of repair but you can tell they're both animated now because they kind of like flinch and will like move their head and kind of like look at you and stuff like that but they're all like missing an arm or this one's legs not connected or this one has all of his insides or his outsides etc etc so um karstis is still in the process of putting these two back together um, how's it smell here not great no not it well it's <laughs> it's kind of strange right because they're uh most of the undead out here are um are long dead right so they're mostly bones and um dried out muscle and things like that the whites have a few components that are a little fresher it's really the flesh golem that just exudes this stench of perpetual decay um probably because like you can see it on the occasion just like regenerating little bits of itself um <laughs> right uh but karstis actually has his area is it's not pleasant because it kind of has that uh, formaldehyde uh, smell, right? Like the kind of like embalming fluid kind of smell type scenario. So it's not it's not great, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Anyways, moving on. What's up, fam? Hey, Karstis does not say that. Karstis says, you guys, are, <laughs> "You guys are back like really quick. I mean, um, I'm I'm oh. trying, but uh, I've not had. We're not doing this like now, right? Like, no, 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 no. No, no, we're, no. We're, we're, we're okay, still. You, you see, like he he had like a little mini panic attack. Like it was like 
you know, test day and he wasn't prepared mm-hmm. type scenario. <laughs> like, so he's like, okay, okay, whew, cool. Um, and, and you see, he, he'd been kind of like, he'd walked in, motioned for you guys to follow him and had been immediately picking things up and like trying to like piece these whites back together in like rapid, you know, mode. And then you guys are like, no, 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 no. And he's like, oh, okay, okay. He puts a, he puts a hand down and he's like, all right. Yeah, actually, we we kind of hit a uh, a bit of a snag um, before we can really kind of push forward. Um, okay, what's up? You got any souls? Willing souls. So he he kind of he does the blink thing at you about the souls, and then Ezra's over here going willing souls, and he does the. Um, I mean, I have i which is kind of like soul essence a bit, right? But, um, I mean, well, Willing Falcon. Souls sounds like you're after something a little fresher. What, what's going on? We may have found a way to deal with the immortality aspect of the uh, members of the scourges. Um, what? The, we've, yeah, the, we've gotten a glimpse into the um, <clears throat> what turned the, the Queen of Bones into her bestial state. Really? That's crazy. What, 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 what happened? How'd that, how'd that happen? We might have experienced the past, uh, in the body of some, uh, snake people that gave us insight on a ritual that would rend the immortality of mushrooms. Nope, nope, we're, we're, no, we're, it we're sober. It sounds like you ate the mushrooms. You didn't eat mushrooms, we're sober. Are you sure? Yep, yep, we, we even have, we already did a ritual. I mean, it's okay if you did. I, I ate the mushrooms, like, second day I got here. Arstus. Yeah? This seems to be legit. Okay. He is the soul that will be bound to this will be wrestling with the souls of Exgutha and Sarakath like forever. What? what? Alright, hold, hold, hold on. Start from the beginning and explain it all to me. As Ezra does not do that. <laughs> does not give the keys to the kingdom to a student of Dwermacor. Okay, what happens then? Because because uh, Ashes has already said enough to uh, like. He has said too much to like. He has Jace blamed <laughs> Ashes, plenty. Ashes I has did not. maybe not let the cat out of the bag, but he is given up the goat. That there, there is a ritual requiring a willing soul to bind itself to a container. With the sole purpose, as part of a ritual, to spend eternity combating the immortal essence of a target. In this case, one of these scourges. You say that, right? And as soon as you kind of start to finish, Arsa sits down next to he he goes sits down um, at his desk. Not at point, either. Point of, not at point of the quick two. inquiry. Yeah. When I was scouring his room before, did I see a jar that looked at all familiar to? No, you did not. <laughs> okay. Just 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 figure that nope. throw that out there. No, you did not. Um, as you're saying this, right, he goes, uh, sits down at his desk, he opens, um, uh, his spellbook, right? 
Um, and you remember rifling through his spell book. It was filled with mm -hmm. spells, yes, but like most spell books, it's also filled with notes, ramblings, musings, etc., etc., right? Um, spells are very commonly just like socketed amongst just inane gibberish from various mages, you know? Um, and he starts to rifle through, um, and he's listening to you, and you get to the end, and he kind of like looks up and he says, Locked in combat. Is that what you said? And he kind of like, he kind of like throws that out there, and then he kind of like waves his hand. He says, Hardly. The, the ritual likely is just a matter of a stasis, but the soul itself, the original soul, is more of a binding it's more of a glue right uh the concept of two souls grappling with one another for all eternity it's i mean that's the worst soul imprisonment i can ever think of eventually one of them is gonna lose and then the other breaks out right like and if you're doing it for all eternity you're basically guaranteeing that eventually the one you don't want out is gonna get out because you know luck of the dice all that jazz it has to be something more along the lines with the ritual binding one soul to another soul the specially prepared um enclosures urns jars receptacles there's a ritual for the creation of the container yes does it have some sort of fleshy component there's wax and blood i was gonna say you also know again from from just like the cursory knowledge of the nightmare speaker right that the the urns themselves were prepared from the body oh, they were of made the from high uh, princess, the right? anathema and, yep. and they contain each of them contains the one of her hearts right yes. one of her four hearts yeah. um do you share that with karstis or do you just leave it at at uh wax and blood Uh, I would say there's a heart of a creature that's used in the creation of the container. Oh, I just, yes. All right, that makes sense, absolutely. It would need to be a powerful creature, or at least one with a focused will. Um, we're I guess we're allowed to believe that's matter. the case. Yeah, okay. Um, the heart is going to be an additional binding, right? Um, you have the soul that is glue for the second soul. But the potentially more important thing is the housing, the containment, the intent behind its design, and the intent on how it is going to... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, how it's going to seal the, the target, right? Um, you said you saw the past. What happened? What's... Um, we watched the transformation of the Queen of Bones from her original form as a part of this original what, ritual. What happened with the transformation? When, when her soul was bound, how, how did that happen? And you see, he's like, he's taking notes as he's asking these questions and musing yeah. these thoughts. Yeah. Uh, it, it it rendered flesh from bone. He does that kind of like, like light, like and you see, like every all the time, he's just like looking down at this tome, writing and asking these que these questions, not making eye contact. But every few moments, right, there's like an aha moment, and he'll lift his head up and he'll look at you, and he'll and he'll have that clearly like that, oh, um, and as soon as you say that, he like thus leaving her in her present form yes now she had to be on her deathbed to even begin this process weakening the body bringing the soul forth yes that makes sense but you said hearts for the creation of the receptacle rending the flesh it's flesh for flesh and soul for soul flesh for flesh and soul for soul and looks at you. So that's why you need a willing soul. 
You have the urns. You have the flesh for flesh. But you're looking for... Oh. And he, he, can, he does that kind of like, willing soul? That, that, is, that is part of the ritual. <laughs> as, as we know. He looks at you and, and he says, does it have to be? That's my uh, understanding of the example we were given. Does it have to be? Maybe not. Uh, but that seems like that's he, risking... He, he looks at you, Ezra, and he says, Well, as a uh, future pupil of Dwemercore, I can tell you, most of the time we spend in the classrooms is figuring out how to not do the example the way the example was done. Oh, boy. <laughs> Look, I everyone it... wants to to have their own little creative flair. Have you ever known a gaggle of wizards to not have a little bit of one-upmanship going on? There's just a streak of lightning that runs across my arm. <laughs> He's just yep. like... No oh, idea. You know! <laughs> um, a willing soul would definitely make things easier. Not necessarily required. But easier. Maybe a stronger binding, too. If it wasn't a willing soul, there would need to be reinforcements made for such occasions. Glue's um, hardly going to be good glue if it doesn't want to be. Um, to answer your question, in its immediacy, no, I do not have souls in the form in which you speak, nor do I have willing souls. Doesn't mean that we can't get some. It's just... Just a matter of... What price you're willing to pay. I know... I know a night hag named Worm Riddle. Oh, no. And for the right price, <laughs> she can get you anything. <laughs> We 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 know of her. <laughs> it oh, finally comes come full circle. <laughs> it's come to this. No, I'm sorry. What was that name again? Uh, she is in Dwarmacore. A uh, worm riddle. This worm? is the cousin that we need to seek out already. Oh. Oh, is was that hags? I love taking notes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Arsis uh, just kind of like drops that in y'all's lap. Ezra visibly reacts to that <laughs> name. Just not, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I love playing, I love giving you guys things like nine months ago and then like them finally coming to fruition. Oh. Bargaining with a uh, hag comes at a steep price. Oh. Depends on what you're bargaining for. Nice cup of tea? Pretty reasonable cost. Uh, you know. Uh, Holy Avenger? Looking at a for firstborn. What's uh, Holy Avenger? I don't know, some glowy sword that smites evil, or so I've heard. Just making a comparison, you know. Like, the the more valuable a thing to you, mind you, the more the price. 
I assume she is still within the confines of Dwarmacore? Uh, I mean, last I saw her, yeah. Well, that makes She's things She's a little, um... But actually, maybe this isn't such a good idea. <laughs> Technically, I never said it was a good idea. Keep that in mind, Karstus. Keep that in mind. No, oh, we've dealt with eggs. We understand some of what they're capable of. Fair enough. Do you have to, like, uh, have one of these jars on you? Nope. Rats. Because I could, you know, take a look. Maybe see if I could, like, devise a way to improve it or alter the ritual or duplicate things or something Very along thoughtful. those lines. Very thoughtful. He kind of, like, squints at you and he says, You don't seem very trusting of me, Ezra. It's not you that I'm not trusting of. He, he turns and he looks at the whites. <laughs> You're smarter than that. I'm used to mages keeping their secrets. We trusted you enough to come to you with this information. Take that as you will. <laughs> kind of shrugs, and he's like, fair enough. All right, well. I, there may, there may be else? a time in the not-too-distant future where we uh, ask for your aid in what you can assume will be a confrontation. I'm gearing, gearing up. Oh, by the way, we dealt with the uh, Bullywug situation, so that won't be um, necessary. De dealt with the... the... Oh! Yerk. What what happened there? Turned into a slotty. What? He was yep. a death slot. Yep. And then we killed him. Yep. And his gray slotty... Uh, How strange. Minion. I wonder if Surely not. <laughs> right. that, okay. That, um... that issue has been resolved. <laughs> you guys just let him slide on nope. that. Cool. Fair nope. enough. I mean, he probed us and we batted him off, so I think it's only fair for... I mean... All right. Let's let him have his secrets. Fair enough. He just well, all it. right. Then um, what's the next stop? Are you asking me? No, I'm not asking you. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, do, but did, like, do you need anything? Like, uh, like since they're gonna be around. Yeah, an extra three sets of hands and uh, knowledge of the undead and decent skill in necromancy. We have one of those things. Um, uh, some who has experience in necromancy? Nice food could be uh, good as well. I pull out like a like a dried ration. <laughs> Just kind of like gestures over to the corner where there's a pile of rations and he's like Pass. Do you like grubs? Insects? It's got a lot of protein. Bullywugs love them. Looks at you and he's just like... I don't think so. But thank you. Nevertheless. Don't deny until you try. I was gonna. But then I didn't. Okay. Um, Karstus, I mean, you know, the conversation seems to be mostly done. Karstus goes back to tinkering with his whites. Uh, you guys huddle back up. 
um, with the concept of, okay, um, now what is the next step that you guys would actually uh, like to do? Um, yeah, before we go, um, or like as we go, right? Uh, I want to leave the bones and then, uh, hey, oh, can I ask you, you a small? Can you, I you, robot, you, you robot. You robot. You beep boop. Am I good now? You seem fine now. Okay. I would, uh, like, as we're going, I would like to ask Bones uh, if he could do me a small favor. Um, as we're walking, I'll pull out that cat skull that I got from the 10-foot hole, right? Okay. Um, the one that is, gave off, like, a magical presence but isn't in and of itself, like, magical whatever. I can't remember the exact definition of what it was, but... Uh, I will give it to him. It'll be like, hey, I know you're good with, like, bone work. So, uh, could you take this skull and on the top of the head carve a, 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 an image into it? It is real simple. Just a big circle and then a ring around that circle. So, oh, two circles. Well, I mean, it's it's, yeah. Circle and then a, a. So two circles. So. What are you trying to accomplish here? Because I feel like you're trying it's to entrap me right now. Char also, Char's symbol. Also, why did you choose to do Char's this when Zach's symbol. not here? I, did, I wanted to do it last week, but it didn't. The opportunity didn't didn't arise. We were doing a bunch of other shit. Okay. Gotcha. <sighs> I assume he's okay. talking about Char's symbol. Is that what you're yeah. trying to accomplish? Why? I mean, Why are that, you being so cagey with that, me? It's, it's pretty similar. Yeah, not, uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. That's pretty close. I feel like he's not. I feel like he's trying to like make bones put a nipple on the head of this fucking cat no, skull or no, some I, shit. I just want a circle and a circle around the circle on the top of the skull. Do you want a purple ring? Uh... I do not think bones has paint. But hey, Matt, I might have an, uh, a, a request for you after Bones is done. I'm not using my magical paint for whatever the hell you try to do. Well, I don't need paper. I don't need paper. Just a little bit of, little bit of, little bit of ink. A little bit of paint. Yes, Jeremy, I want the symbol of Char engraved on the top of the skull. And yes, Matt, I would like for you to paint the inside circle black and the outside purple. I mean, Bones absolutely has zero issue doing this for you. Bones would have said Why? yes, probably from the very beginning. Okay. So yeah, he'll he'll take it from you and he'll start to like just, you know, work on stuff when he has the time. It's that's that is not something that's gonna take him a long time. That's like a 10, 15 minute project at most. So okay. Sounds like a plan. Um as you guys are kind of like sitting there or standing there, like uh, having a brief conversation, the the flesh golem kind of like shambles uh, over, S stands next to Matt, looks down at him, hey, uh, kind of nods at him. Stands there. That's the flesh. Uh... I can relate. Um. All right, guys. Yeah, you ready to go? <laughs> where, where are we? Where are we going now? What? What's the plan? Away from here for the moment. <laughs> but you have a, a friend. I do have a friend, uh, and I will miss him. Bye! Yeah, as, you, as you guys leave, right, like, the flesh golem, like, follows you, Matt, with his eyes. You get about 10, 15 feet away, and he starts to follow you physically. Um, and you can see as you guys are exiting, right, like, he basically goes back, and he's just like, Oh... I think your friend's gonna miss you. Uh, there will be a mutual missing. 
Okay. Anyways, um, I can just I just see that scene from the Titanic at the front of the ship, but it's Matt in a flesh golem instead. I'm flying, Jack. I'm flying. <laughs> the flesh golem I'm just hurls Matashtai off the ship. <laughs> just <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's that it's that scene where it pulled far away, so you just see this little bitty splash that you just no, you <laughs> don't see a splash because Matashtai would not take fall damage, and he would just go <gasps> and run on the yeah, fucking you water. See, you see, since he walks on water, right? It's a hard surface, so if it's more than like, what is it? No, I think we calculated that basically he has to take terminal fall damage. For it to actually do anything to him at this point. Isn't it like 300 or 500 it's, feet that you have to fall it's before you... It's a crazy you, uh, amount. It's, it, I don't it's think it's obscene. that much, but I think it's up in like the 60s to 80s or something like that, that he has to fall before he takes any chance at damage. Well, fall. Uh, five times any fall damage is reduced by five times my monk level. You guys are 12? Yeah. So, so sixty damage. It has to do more than sixty fall damage. So it's just to hurt you. Five just times to hurt me. Twelve is sixty. Yep. Yeah. I think in the world <laughs> there was of a, there was a moment there, there is no such thing as terminal velocity. Huh? I don't, I don't oh, think there's, there's terminal velocity in D and D. I don't think at 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 a certain point of fall that the damage stops calculating right? uh yeah i think i think there actually is like yes. there's a there is a this is the maximum amount of fall damage you're supposed to be able to take uh, huh it is an obscene think, amount of damage i think it's like 14 d6 yeah well here's the thing though you basically just said 10 d6 you completely ignore if you if they yeah. max rolled all sixes on 10 d6 you would be like yeah that does no damage to me so 14 or 15 d6 you absolutely probably don't take any damage from the maximum fall damage is 20 oh, 20 d6, 20 d6. 20. Yep. okay so he's he guarantees takes no damage from half of that so right now if there were if it was like an average to low roll matashtai might not take any damage from 20 d6 Nice. 69 you take nine awesome. damage nice from a from 200 feet 200 foot fall <laughs> you would take nine oh damage God. that's <laughs> stupid is what that is worship me i don't no. i i think that would be one of those scenarios where like no nah, i don't i don't go with the rules as written on that like you take you take a d6 for every 10 10 feet new new military strategy you just load up catapults with a bunch of high-level monks and launch them over walls. I, I mean, walls. you say that, but I kind I of mean, already I'm imagined everything. I kind of already <laughs> imagined that that's literally where you came from. You talked about like the the hearth guard basically just like teleporting in and then jumping down the mountainside after their enemies. Yeah. Like I imagined you you get teleported in and there's like a fifty foot cliff and, and cliff and everyone's like, all right, we going. <laughs> you know, just don't, drop it into the be fight. Fair, not all of the Hearthguard are monks. Fine. It's there's there's absolutely a <laughs> jump off the cliffs contingent. How about that? Yes. Yeah. Not all of them are monks. It's just all of the ones that aren't monks are either wizards that cast fly or Aarakocra. You know, it's fine. Okay. So, uh, Necromancer wasn't able to help uh, basically on the uh, grounds that he can't produce a soul that is willing. So I will I will and, make this and... abundantly clear, though. Uh, Karstis did seem to have a lot of theoretical ideas on stuff. So if you guys want to go that route and you're willing to trust him with things, then he might be able to rig something up for you guys. But that is... And again, I'm I'm gonna say that that's that's like Ezra's interpretation. Ezra is your arcane kind of focus here. That's that's what Ezra's getting from Karstis yeah. laying it down, right? Like he, the he way very... the questions that he was asking, the way he was talking about it, he seemed to pick up what you were putting down really quick, which makes sense because it is very close to his area of expertise. 
right? Everything we give him has a chance of ending up in other hands. Yep. I just imagined, like, the skeletal hand shooting up out of the grave. And it's just like, those are the other hands Ezra's talking about. No, those are not. <laughs> So, Come all right, on, so sure. that, that no. was Karstus, and we're skipping the the Ghost Boy by the. I mean, the I mean, you can go poke around with Ghost Boy if you want. I'll watch from a healthy distance. Bones looks at you, Ashes, and be like, "You want to poke around with most Ghost Boy? I'll poke around with you." Yeah, I'm all around. I'm willing to. I'm willing to. I mean, entertain Ezra, the you idea. got like really long range. What you got like 200, 300 foot range, right? Like, no. You but know, like, I will be that far away. Oh, I mean... Okay. <laughs> like... Fine. He, he, does, he does the Zack point thing where he points at, like, one of you is like, You good? You good? You good? Po points at Matash out. You want, you want to poke around with Ghost Point? <laughs> nah. Ezra seems pretty against it. You're like, okay. <laughs> like, he, he immediately is just like, Alright, whatever. Right. All right. Uh, then, um, where are we heading next? Guardian bodies. Let's drain them and try and summon some souls. Back to the temple. But back to temple music. Silver Fox. Silver Fox. Don't poison me, bro. Silver Fox. Oh, God. <laughs> Silver. <laughs> All right. You guys oh, get inverted. You guys get uh, you, doubled in size. Can you like capture some cloud kill in a vial and cork it, and like throw a cloud kill blast at someone's face? You want to try? Kinda. Go try. Ashes, can I get a can I get a vial? And I'll, I'll use my prehensile prehensile tail and produce a bottle with a cork. I haven't heard that in a while. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I need to start using that more. Okay. I'm running there. I'll pop the cloud kill. You run in. You don't say the password. The cloud kill pops. You're immune to poison. It gasses the entire room. You, you. Okay, you, you got it. All right, I'll walk back out. Walk back out, rejoin the party. I mean, Fucking you can see that there's a green gas in this corked vial. Alright. Probably not gonna work, but I'm gonna put it on the list for now. I have it. Cloud kill vial. Probably more like a cloud vial. fart vial. Yeah, cloud fart vial. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, oh god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> It's like it's sulfur, but worse. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, so we head back to the temple. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask some of the Bullywugs <laughs> to see if they can bring in those bodies back into yep. the temple. I don't remember where we ended those. <laughs> there, uh, there, oh, there they are. Well, there they go. <laughs> the Bullywugs uh, assist you in bringing the all the way in to the, to the altar. Yes. Uh, uh, assist you in bringing those bodies into the inner sanctum. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a quick jog, and I'm gonna go get Culp. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, as you are leaving to get Culp, right? Risk, kind of like, um, Risk is on. Well, no, he probably wouldn't be on his way. As you are, you jog to get Culp. Um, where do you head? Where Where are you going? I'll, I'll I'll let Risk know where I'm going. Well, um, Risk Risk is gone. I I forgot. Risk Risk left okay. after you guys to go. You know, start up the process of well, getting people. Then ready. I will start by seeing if I can find him because I want him to know what we're doing. Okay. Um, so I find him and give him a heads up that I'm going to go grab. Clark where Where do you go to try to find him? Uh, I'll start with where we initially hung out with the Bullywugs. Okay. So back in that, like over the little. Um, location where you had the hut and the feast and everything like that that first yeah. time okay that is where you find risk yeah um, 
So, uh, you, Risk is there, uh, speaking with some of the, just the Black Tongue tribe, um, and you, you know, you walk in, um, you're recognized, you're hailed by many of the, the tribe, um, and then Risk approaches you and, and just kind of very quietly is, is I'm already. Yeah, well, um. Karsus didn't have much for us. He had ideas, but um, nothing that could really get us to the finish line, so to speak, for now. Um, so, add things that could get you to the finish line. Y'all just don't want to make any deals with Night Hags, so that's not his fault. Yeah, so he had nothing. <laughs> um, Sorry, I'm embittered over here. <laughs> Y'all keep talking trash and be like, we can't do this. There's no, there's no way for us to do this. I'd be like... Y'all just kill two people willingly, and, and it's done right here, right now. Let's go. Um. So I was gonna I was gonna grab Colt and see if we can maybe use these two. U N T guardians. He nods at you. He says, "Ah, you have any? You think there's a way for him to not figure out?" I think that we just try to Ooh, I don't want to lie <laughs> neither do um, I but I, maybe we start with a lot of omission if I just don't say what it's for just ask for we... help talking to the spirits if they nope. don't even respond, then no harm, no foul. If they do... That's right. Well, I mean, then it starts to get dicey. Yeah. Um, and then maybe a try line. Not good at it, but I can try and say if only you on T-Souls work. <laughs> you don't seem good at lying. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not good at all. He, he, looks at you, he looks at you and he nods. He says, I think that's good. You hear Melina in your mind. She says, yes, that is good, Matashtai. Even considering your recent activities and lear new learned skills. That's just friendly talk. That's not lying. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, so I guess we just start with just trying to keep our cards close to our chest for now. So what's your deception roll look like? Risk Not good. Risk looks at you and he says, Sometimes. You have to choose to cut the line. Not a fun choice, though. No, he probably had a real good lure on the end, too. Served you a long time. Spent a lot of time painting it, making it shiny. It kind of like, he's kind of like, shiny! <laughs> Gotta make it shiny! That's... Some of the fish like shiny. Most of our fish are blind. Mm, that's fair. That might be a surface, surface surface fishing thing. I would like to fish on this. We'll go sometime. I'm not real good at it, but I've done it. I'm very good at it. Well, you'll just have to show me that. <laughs> he, he does that like, he does that like, I mean, man, like, y'all have, y'all have spent some time with them, but the bully wugs are weird, y'all. <laughs> they are not yeah. normal. Dry. Yeah. Very dry. They're, uh, anyways. anyways they're uh, they're so... the British of the underworld. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. You over there right, calling uh, them dry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go grab Colt and see what we can figure out. I will continue to make the rounds. Good luck. Right. Thank you. And I jog off to Colt. Alright. Um, 
is there anything happening in the meantime uh, while you guys are waiting for Matashtai to return with Culp? I start hovering over uh, Bones as he's working on the skull. Uh, yeah, I mean, he'll. there's nothing else happening, so he'll pop it out and start to, like, very finely etch into the bone. Um, excellent craftsmanship, perfect circles, the, the, the need, like... Need the heart of the mountain? Jeez. Huh? I mean, this is kind of like, like, legitimately, honestly, this is like, this is the stuff he would have done as a, a teenager or a young, um, uh, tabaxi amongst his tribe, right? Like, carving on, like, things like this is is like the stuff of like doing you know idle bone work um <laughs> back home so yeah this is probably yeah. just like this is cushy um chill time so yep um and in point of fact i mean like matashtai is out there hoofing it but like even assuming like he's going around he's not like naruto sprinting double dashing step of the wind etc <laughs> like so at all times at all times all fucking times um that that means probably like a good a good 10 15 minutes pass at least between the conversations and everything like that so um bones is probably done with this by the time that matashtai gets back um, hey, nice. um and you have just like this circle engraved in the center and then another uh outer ring surrounding that um and it's just like a shallow indentation basically it's just engraved so um, yeah, yeah yeah all right cool. cool thank you i appreciate that bones and did, zach whenever you get back <laughs> did i just like make a i don't know what did i just do uh i'm you know I what am, I, uh... it's, it's fine it's whatever that seems like a very Zack slash Bones way to handle it. Yeah. Like, you seem yeah. apprehensive. Eh, pass. Um, okay. Uh, Ezra, was there anything for you while uh, Atashtai was away? Any any uh, preparatory things? Any things you're trying to figure out, do, try, uh, consider? Ezra is trying to pencil out his script for what he is going to tell the Bullywugs if we get to the conga line okay. of God, he's, blood sacrifice he's writing to avoid his to, to, uh, <laughs> well just just a, a basic synopsis of of what they're doing and why they're doing it and the will that has to come behind the, it without the coaching. giving away yeah yeah you're you're prepping yeah, the coaching yeah. gotcha okay cool um Matashtai, you find Culp. Um, you are direct. You have to ask around, and you are directed uh, past the spawning pool and actually into uh, Yerk's um, sanctum. Right, uh, Culp is there, floating in the water with Zetlal, who has made um, this strange kind of like. Uh, reed and fern and mud nest that is floating in the center of the pond here that has the egg laying on top of it um and zetlal is just kind of like in the water there culp is uh in the water near the egg um and he's kind of like he seems to be communicating with Zetlal in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Um, I would say, um, howdy y'all. How you doing? Uh, cult turns, right? Like, acknowledges you. Uh, Zetlal, one of, one of her five heads, turns and does the, like, intense stare, like, constantly concentrating on you thing that she did you know, in, in the battle. Um, and that head does not, it does not go away from you, this entire conversation. That that head is just always, like, death glare at you. Um, but Culp, like, uh, you know, it's just, oh! Gosh, Ty. I was just talking to Zetlov. There are momentous times 
happening for the Black Tongue tribe. Seems like it. Still more yet to come, though. We will... And he kind of, like, nods up to Zetlaw and says, We will need all of our strength together to face the Scourges. Sure will. Speaking of, wondering if I might steal you for a minute. Um, and he kind of looks back to Zetlal and he says something. In a language question mark you don't understand? Um, uh, and the Hydra's four other heads kind of like nod at him. Um, and then he kind of like uh, very gently pats the egg um, and then swims across the pond over to you. Um, and he comes like waddling up out and he says, ah, what, what can I, can I do for you, young man? Why don't you walk with me? Uh, wondering if you might come to the temple with me. Okay, he starts walking with you, right? Um, as he walks, he kind of like, you know, like he pokes you, kind of like curious as to what you need. Yeah, so um, we've been getting, I think, a little bit closer to figure out this ritual thing that the old um, Braille Olo or whatever uh, used against the Scourge back in the day. Um, oh! Izu said you had returned from the memory once more. Yes, yeah. uh, a little bit better. You were able to glean more knowledge. Good. We think Good. so. Uh, we don't have the full picture yet, uh, which is actually why I came to get you. I'm wondering if you might be able to communicate with uh, spirits of these two guardians that were guarding the temple. Maybe we can talk to them. I can... I can try. That sort of communication is difficult without the intervention of my god, who does not intervene in the best of times, most often. Yeah, that's fine. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's no problem. But, uh, just trying to... Exhaust all options here. Well, very well. Thank you for doing this. Who and your friends have... been very willing... to help us. Well, that's what friends do. Risking the others. Friends of ours. Makes all of you friends of ours as well. Kind of smiles at you and he gives you that kind of like older person pat on the, the arm. Right? <laughs> he's so little too, but like... <laughs> yeah, he's, he is not a... He's, I mean, the many of the Bullywugs are... Most of the Bullywugs are smaller than you are, but not by like a great amount, right? Uh, but sure. Culp's... Culp's kind of got that old person kind of shrinkage going on scenario, so... Like the Master Roshi of, of frogs? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Except not secretly ripped. Not secretly ripped? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, anyways. Uh, yeah, okay. Culp is able to um, make his way back over to the temple with you. Um... He find his token and actually pull him on over. Um, okay. So... While he's there, or, or as he enters, right? Like, he sees the two figures of the serpentine abominations, and he's like, oh! And he looks over at you, Matashta, and he's like, <laughs> these? Yeah. Did you do this? I mean, not me alone. Like, all of us. And you want to talk to them after? Yeah, it might not go well. Wait, do you speak Yuan T? No. No. 
Well, this is going to be a very awkward conversation. Not unless they know common. As well. It depends on how aggressive they are about things. I might not be doing much talking, period. You might want to, like, if, if, you know, communications are established, immediately come out of the gate with, you know, you know, would you like to really fuck over the scourge? Ed's. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, out of character, real quick. Um, depending on how things go, like, my plan is to, if they don't understand us, I'm going to point at the jars and then point at them. Oh. Oh, because they you, and then, they're guarding the temple. They should know. You're hoping you're hoping to get by without explaining anything to Culp. <laughs> if I can. Wow, that's wow. I gotta say, that's pretty clever. Wow. I like that. Okay, 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 okay. Alright. Culp uh looks at you and he says, Well, I can try to establish a connection at any time. Are you ready? I'm as ready as we're ever going to be. Okay. Here goes nothing. <laughs> and he, he wow. reaches into his kind of like, you know, his uh, tunic, right? And you see him kind of like grip something. Um, and he says a single word, does not say it in his own voice. It's still the voice of a bullywug, right? But it sounds more like Cass. It's a, it's a young, deep male voice right and he says like with the with the accompanying appropriate bullywug croak right like he says ramenos his eyes roll into the back of his head his jaw goes slack and his tongue lolls out to one side and he just stands there for a moment. And so I think we're going to leave this one to Matashtai. Um, he told you his god is not one to respond in the best of moments. Um, so we're going to give you a 50-50 uh, roll a d100. You want above you want a 51 or above okay um can i do anything to help this what Are you got things to help it aloud what you got <laughs> what, um, how what 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 magical mumbo jumbo what horse shit what monk bullshit what what you got going on that you think you're going to influence this Cleric's contact with his god. Do we know who his god is? Uh, Menos. He just said its name. Yep. Oh, okay. That's the god's name. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, DM inspiration will get you a, a, I'll say a second roll, basically. I don't have DM inspiration. Oof. You don't have it either. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys actually of use all yeah, of your uh, of inspiration? Yeah. Oh, I I used mine and failed with it. I used I mine have a during talisman the of opportunity. Uh, right. Bones does not have uh, inspiration either. Even if he did, I what's don't your talisman of opportunity? Be... It's advantage on ability checks and attack this rolls. Is not an ability check, so I yeah. I don't think because you're basically trying to see if you can influence this guy's connection with his god. Um, yeah. Now, if you can figure out a way that an ability would work for that, 
Uh, we can walk back that D100 check and, and go from there, but that's going to be a tough sell, my friend. Not an impossible <laughs> sell, but a tough sell. You got that Kalistar um, weird magic going on? That 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 alien magic going on? Uh, I got... Yup. Mm -hmm. got, got alien magic. Um... Yeah, I don't think I got shit that's going to help this. Um, I did think about something that I want to retcon and try to do before. Um, okay, sure. The tongue of Madness Mushrooms. Are those the mushrooms that al allow you to speak languages? I think Speaking we've asked language? this before. I think the Tongue of Madness Mushroom is so named because it does, like, confusion or... Oh, okay. um, Let's check. Things. Oh, no, no, no. It is um, when DC consumed... 12 con save, compulsively speak aloud. It's every thought. every thought for the next yeah. hour. It's not it's not a it's not a understand things. It's word salad things. It's, it's a liar, liar. The, the, yeah. the movie, the mushroom, the movie, the mushroom. Right. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, I, like I got that. nothing to impact this. So. Oh, God. 91! What up? Alright! <laughs> that would have spoiled like a year ago. Probably. But look, we we do the whole like D&D &D inventory is sacred thing. You know? Oh, you're talking about the mushrooms? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, those definitely would have. I mean, it's been like a week since you got them. Yeah, you just like you just got like a little mushroom patch pouch where you're growing duplicates. Basically, That's they're right. just replacing they each grow. other. <laughs> okay, ninety-one. Culp. His voice changes. His eyes roll into the back of his head. His tongue lolls to the side. Like full length, full length out. No, not full length out. It's just kind of like over, <laughs> slightly over the edge, right? Um, there's a, uh, uh, you know, several moments that pass, right? And uh, Culp is unresponsive, doesn't, doesn't do or say anything, and then. You see his eyes, are again rolled into the back of his head. Um, you see this inky blackness begin to wash up over them, as if like an oil slick is spreading out and overtaking the entire surface of his eye. Um, there's a blackness and a shimmering sheen kind of quality to it, where you almost kind of like see um, at different angles the, you know, like, almost kind of like a rainbow effect. And he says again in that very low, masculine voice, um, he says, there are many spirits. So many. Not no to speak to. Oh, no. Uh... You see his hand and, like, move out to the side, right? Kind of almost grasping um, as if to, like, take someone else's hand. Um, do you, like, do I, do I walk up there and put my hand out, or is he, like, trying to grab a ghost? Uh, okay, oh. I'll, I'll walk up there and grab his hand. Um, <laughs> he slaps it away. You walk up, you right? Do. You walk up, right? <laughs> and and his, he, he's grasping, grasping. Your hand is then there, and he, he touches it, and he, he kind of, like, starts slightly, and then grips it, hit, touches it, grips it, takes it. Says, I need connection 
need direction. There okay, are so over. many here. I'll walk him over to the corpse. And I place his hand on the corpse. There's a moment that passes, right? And his voice it doesn't change, right? But it feels like it's it's working in a manner in which um, you know he's been he's been speaking in in kind of like a different voice, but now it's it's as if he's speaking in like a different dialect, right? Um, still the same language. He's still just speaking common to you, um, but it's he sounds accented. He sounds like it, he is um, not speaking it as his first language, right? Um, which he isn't. But uh, he says a word. He says, uh, "Sectlies, you did not want." And you see, uh, he kind of shakes his head and he says, Not this one. Not this one. This one moved on. Okay. I make him do the other one. Okay, same scenario. Place his hand on uh, the Abomination's chest. Um, touch his hand to the uh, corpse's chest, kind of recoils back. Um, stands up straight, um, and the kind of like a hiss escapes his mouth, a deep kind of guttural hiss. Um, and it, and then he repeats it, and you realize he's not he's not hissing; he's saying a name. Um, he's just saying it in such a harsh way that it's hard to determine what he's saying. Um, it's Hishiza uh, is the the actual name. Um, he says it twice. Such anger. Such hatred. But for her, not for them. And he kind of grips your hand tighter, Matashtai. And he says, There is no willingness here. Not for this. Actually, hold up. Yeah, no, he would say that. Um, he says, there, there is no willingness here. Not for this. And not for what they were forced to do. Is he saying here as in these two? Or here? I... Uh, roll an insight check for me. Okay. 13. It's hard to tell in this moment. Um, he, his, he is somewhat coherent, but he seems very obviously, like, overwhelmed. Um, by a lot of what's going on. Um, you're not sure. And you feel his body begin to kind of shake a little. Um, and oddly enough, his hand is cold in yours. Um, in this in this swamp where it's so hot and clammy, 
humid, right? Um, his hand is kind of freezing. In um, one last question, Colt. Ask if any of the spirits here will help against the scourge. Roll a persuasion check. Your DC is 10. Hold up. Hold up. Do I feel like I'm going to kill this man by doing this? Roll me an insight check. <laughs> DC is 30. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> God damn. Can I just roll? <laughs> I so would middling. I would say... Whatever suspicions you have are the suspicions that you have. It is your choice as a player to press this situation or not. I bail then. You bail? I bail. I tell him to release and come back. He whispers. I need you to roll me an intimidation check. DC is going to be 14. Good thing I have a plus zero. Thank God. A lot of good that plus seven's been doing you. <laughs> God damn it. There's a moment, right? Like you, you tell, you say the question, you ask the question, right? Is is there anyone else here that is well, right? And then you realize, oh, this is not. You're not willing to risk this getting out of hand. And you tell Cope, never mind. Come back. In, in this and Culp says those words to you right in that low kind of whisper it might be too late um uh and you feel his whole body shake and he raises his head, right? Like he's been looking about eye level. And he raises his head up, up, up. As if he is staring at some massive thing uh, before him. And you will his return um and something happens that i don't know that you've had happen before but there is a moment where your emotion is so heightened so intense that you feel an a gasp or or like hear a gasp like an intake from belina and then you feel a surge as if unbidden um, and almost by your will or an extension of your will, Valena leaves your body and grasps into Culp and pulls him back away from whatever thing he is currently facing. Um, and in an instant, right, like his hand, um, stops freezing, he stops shaking, uh, his eyes, um, roll back, his tongue, you know, slaps into his mouth, he gasps, looks around, and he's, he's shivering now, right, he's not shaking, um, he's jittery. So many souls. So 
many souls here. All tied to her. Bent her. to her will. The mistress of this place. Some nightmare. Uh, an immense serpent with heads like Zetlal, so many heads. This is not a good place. Call oh, Jeff. Well, let's 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 get you out of here. Let's get you some fresh air in the swamp. <laughs> fresh yeah, air, fresh swamp air, some swampy air. Um. Okay. And well, like, I'll, like, I'll, I'll like, like take seeing that he's like kind of fucked up about it. I'll you know escort the man out. Okay. Is this like a group effort, or are you guys like traveling uh, just, with Cole like to take him out, or or what's what's up? Um. It, after hearing what he said, I'm actually going to try and drag the snake people out of there, too. Um, okay. I like, uh, uh, you can easily, you know, like, bring the, or get the Bullywogs to help you once more to, like, cart them, cart the bodies out, um, etc. Um. Risk is not. As you are, you know, you're going through this process, you take Culp out. There's a few of the Bullywogs that are still here. Um, the, the guard, right, that was posted by the new generation at your behest. Um, they help you uh, pull the bodies of the abominations out. Um, and uh, there's uh, you know, a few minutes that pass. What are you guys doing? What's happening in this aftermath um, of of Culp trying to trying to make contact with um, the souls here and uh, presumably getting a little bit more than you guys bargained for? Uh huh. Um, Shit. Well, that didn't go quite as planned. Um. I guess, uh, I guess we're moving on with the communal option, yeah? Uh, okay, so for verification, right, like, Culp is still here. Are you have you guys talking to him? Are you dismissing him? Are you having a conversation in front of him? I'm not about to, like, cheese you guys and be like, Oh, y'all started talking about the thing! He's gonna know! Um, <laughs> what, so what's happening in regards to that? Yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, is he is he starting to like look a little bit better now he's out? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, he uh very rapidly stops shivering. Um, you can see he's uh he's seen something, right? Like he's he's shaken, right? But physically he's okay. Um, he's just like his nerves are up. Um, this is. The Vrail lost to the Scourges. The Scourges are not good people. But that doesn't make the Vrail good people. <laughs> this is a sure. bad place that had some bad people that did some desperate things to try to defeat other bad people. Maybe we um, huddle up for a moment. I, what? 
what are the chances that the scourges themselves are akin to the hags in the uh, Sargoth level? What way? Not entirely good, but left to their own machinations. I don't want to say harmless, but we know they're intelligent creatures. Dog Dad went to go commune with them. Well, maybe before we try anything else we go meet with them how do we get past um hexacali there is a way around okay or so we've been led to believe she isn't a 100 mm percent -hmm. barrier cutting them off uh jeremy correct me if i'm wrong but i was under the impression that there is a way around potentially And perhaps being that Hexakali is as much of a threat to them as she is to everyone else, that can be a bargaining chip. Bones, Bones yeah. I think, is going to pipe up. So, okay. Like, I'm, I'm all down for going and talking, uh, especially since, you know, Dog Dad's involved. I just like saying Dog Dad. But I, I picked up on that. But, uh, Ezra, it sounds like you're almost, almost like you're suggesting that maybe we don't have to do anything about the Scourges. Maybe they can just be left alone? My impression is the Queen of Bones is a pain in everyone's side. So and you're saying we can that... use that to our advantage before, before we, um deal with her we okay. use that as leverage the because talk... she isn't a scourge sure. anymore the talk with the scourges use the idea of taking away a thorn in their side to bargain with them take away the thorn in their side which we were gonna do anyways get whatever Sounds we like bargained it. for and then do them in I mean maybe not Oh, okay. So ba back to talking. Okay, that's what I was circling. Was that like the, we're we're not doing them in? We we might we might not need to, just like the hags on third. So you're we saying kinda, that we can be like, them. hey, if we can, like like alliance or some kind of peace treaty for Hexacali's head. Well, maybe not rush into that because maybe they care more about her than. They're like, that is our dearest sister. Kill them. you. Uh, well, at this point, yeah, I feel like um, our options are getting a little, a uh, little uh, few and far between. Y'all can seeing, send. You can send cult seeing... back in. And Cult's I mean, reaction to the what I'm assuming is the priestess's magic that he encountered really makes me wonder if we're maybe not looking at all our options. I'm not opposed to talking with them. And, you know, if uh, talks go bad, I'm not opposed to smashing in some snake skulls. I mean, they'll come back, but, you know. Come back weaker. We're going to take out some of their thralls, too. Okay. Um, as the DM, I feel, I feel <laughs> that... <Check> the words! <laughs> I feel that it is my responsibility and duty, right... To make sure you guys are making decisions 
from a place of the knowledge that you have access to. So I will remind you that you saw what basically amounts to an army in the memory. Yeah, well, it'll be ten monsters less. So, so like the the working plan so far, right? Like even Culp was talking to you about this as you came here, Matashtai, right? As you brought him to the temple, Culp was talking about how the tribe, the whole plan is for the tribe to stand together to fight against the scourges and their forces with you to bring Zetlal's might to the table, right? You guys have a side deal with a necromancer to give him time to like, you know, raise corpses so that he can also bring power to bear against the might of the scourges. Uh, right. So I'll, I'll look over to any kind of bullywogs that are still around. Um, do you guys have like like ways that you can send like peaceful messages between the black tongue and the scourges i mean or is this like a no communication deal Culp, Culp is still around um and uh you know there's a couple of other bullywogs that were helping you with the corpses um Culp will tell you he'll say uh, uh we tried to parlay on the occasion, um, our messages were received, but the individuals that came back to us were not, were not in control of their own faculties. Well, we got, we, we got that covered with our charm. Sure. He 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 doesn't know what you're talking about with that, um, necessarily. Um, but he just says he says uh, to the southwest, past the, the territory that Hexakali, nor the Queen of Bones, he would call her that, normally roam uh, roams. Southeast. Southwest. Um, is it southwest where I'm Uh, there's um. The only the only place that you can kind of like think of where he might be talking is basically south of the temple that Yoastel was at. That's a location that you guys never really ventured further. Is south mm -hmm. from there, right? Um, that would be the southwest of that territory, basically. Um, More true south, but okay. Sure, sure. But he's not giving he, he's not giving you cardinal directions on the entirety of the the Slither Swamp. He's giving you you know an inference of like where things lie via. Uh, that's you know. Anyway, I concede the DM uh, is always right. <laughs> well, you know, um, he he's just kind of like he's like uh, when the few times we tried. Uh, to send a messenger, they were received. They were they were not killed on sight. But when they came back to us each time, they were not themselves, and we had to defend ourselves against them. Do you by chance remember how long it took for them to receive and return? Not long. Matter of less than an hour? Sure. I have an idea. <laughs> I see the realization of the idea in his head. <laughs> idea. So, uh, so what are we doing? So when when uh, Ash is asked if um, the Black Tongue tribe had ever reached out for a parlay or correspondence with the scourges in the past, and okay. and Culp agreed that that is something that they had tried previously, their messengers were received, 
the message was received, but the messenger themselves didn't come back necessarily um, entirely themselves. They came back mind-controlled or under some yeah. sort of compulsion or something. Yeah. Okay. And I inquired as to the duration of being received and returning with the idea of a lovely little spell called Mislead. Send the, send the Ezra Mislead in and try to have a conversation that way. Okay. Sounds good to me. Also, we can't be mind-controlled with our little fetish boys. Yeah, but if we're in the middle of their entire army, that yeah. makes no, sense. I'm, I'm I, I, I think I managed to actually spook Jake in in reiterating the there's <laughs> an army, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I will I express, could, I could if you guys want to go in guns blazing, self. I am all for this, and I think it's going to be super fucking cool. I'm going to have a time... It's just going to be one of those scenarios where it's like us uh, five, you know, five hours of combat as I have to like roll for every yeah. single monster in the area. And, and, and I could again. just I mention door myself and someone else just out. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like the lucky lottery. Who who gets to go? Yep. It's it's the Xanathar all over again. Yep. All right. The loud. I take the loud one. Fair enough. Let the two sneaky boys sneak. Um. Okay. So. Um. You know, you guys have uh, you've experienced a little scenario with Culp. Um. You could always revisit that uh later if you so choose. There did seem to be something there. Uh, Matashtai just uh. You seemed unwilling to risk it for the biscuit in that particular instance. Um, so from here, where would you guys like to progress? Uh, you have you have the you know the kind of like the tribe bloodletting um, on the table uh, to kind of see if that is an option. Uh, you have the potential to you know maybe you don't have to do any of this. Maybe Ezra just does a little mislead, um, goes and chats up the scourges, and maybe things are okay. Maybe you can like, maybe you can negotiate some sort of treaty or truce, or find out that the scourges aren't that bad. Um, then there's always Karstis. Um, if you guys are willing to trust particular uh, situations, there's. His recommendation of the Night Hag, Worm Riddle, um, so on and so forth. Karsis want in exchange for his help again? Nothing. He was just he just interested in the theory. It's just Ezra's worried that giving him too much he, access or information might lead to something bad. I mean, he is he, a student of Halister, after he all. Want something? He wants a rod from the uh, territory well, that the... Uh, that's that's like his punishment, right? Like, that's what he has been tasked to do to get back into school, right? And he's talked to you guys about that. That's what you're supposed to be... That's kind of the, you know, he'll help you fight the scourges if you get the rod for him. Or if you allow him to and take the rod and the get rod? back into school. Huh? What is the rod again? We don't know exactly. That's something that Ezra needs to confirm before that gets handed over. You don't know exactly, but he he's given you the gist of it, right? It it is a it is a tool for compulsion. As in the thing that's like controlling their army? Potentially, but you don't know. Hmm. I'm just saying, if, if this rod's controlling their army, and we get the rod, two Nagas are pretty easy for a bunch of bullywogs to beat the shit out of. We just keep in the dirt. Just bear real deep. <laughs> I don't know about all that. Uh, 
I don't think the rod is controlling the entire Scourge army. The Naga, you just because you guys can put the Nagas in the dirt does not mean that everything else can put the Nagas in the dirt. I believe in them. Uh, there's also, though, um, if you guys remember, there's not just the Nagas. There and and I mean the Naga, the the Scourge army, right? It's uh, there's a there's a thing, right? Uh, a, a creation, um, something that the Scourges made to oppose Zetlal. Remember? I do not remember that. Uh uh. Yeah, they're um, Culp and friends. Uh, talked to you, told you basically like the brief history of like what had happened here in the Slither Swamp. Um, oh. And they had several initial clashes with these scourges. Um, and then they, they were the scourges in response to Zetlal's might, because Zetlal is actually something that poses a threat to them. Right, the oh. scourges in response to Zetlal's might uh, used the corpses of the Bullywugs that they had killed in battle, um, as well as some of the living Bullywugs uh, that they had dominated to make something to oppose Zetlal. That's that actually that's actually where um, they talked about how. Uh, they were on their way to fight. This was one of the last times when the new generation was actually still here, I think. Uh, and they were still co they were still working with Yurk before Yurk went all tyrannical and everything. And Zetlal was supposed to face off against this abomination, but they couldn't get past the Queen of Bones. That was one of their scenarios where, like, the Queen actually got in their way at that point. Um, so... Playing with all the information. So we weren't told what exactly... They don't know what it exactly it is. Okay. 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 It's, it's some massive creature that the Nagas have grown, Absolute. mutated, created, something. Wheat. I want to fight it. <laughs> well yeah obviously <laughs> right you just want to stun it you don't want to fight it you just want to stun it so you add it to your look list. um oh. Oh. allow allow for a kaiju battle and just stun it while zetlal is fighting it and give zetlal the win there you go easy peasy i'm all for kaiju fights <laughs> It's okay if we do a kaiju battle though. Someone has to control the ka kaiju. I'm not just gonna like kaiju fight myself. Damn it! Nope, it's, it's all you, Jeremy. You got <laughs> it's, this. It's gonna be a very boring yeah. session. I, I want my Zetlaw rolls. <laughs> Zetlaw rolls five attacks. Zetlaw rolls seven attacks. And keep getting my, ripped off. I want my cinematic kaiju battle. Oh, okay. And I okay. want you to be super descriptive with each attack. I'm so just, it feels like I can sit here and watch a movie. I'm just going to be like 12, video 17, play. 24. <laughs> I want a radio play, Jeremy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're talking to the wrong man. Okay. Um, you, guys got, you guys got options on the table. They might not all be great, happy-go-lucky options, but you guys got options on the table. What would you like to do? What would you, where would you like to go from here? What is the, what is the course of action? Where steers uh, the rudder? Well, you, you want to go mislead some bitches? I mean, oh we my. can try that, or we can go ourselves. Also, oh my. We can't do that. Or, I, I mean, I'm good can... with both options. I just think that as soon as we get there and they see the fetishes on us, or sense them on us, they're like, oh, these bitches. You, you say happens. that, right? Like, as you're saying, see the fetishes on us, like, Bones gives you this look, like, and he takes the fetish and puts it, like, in his shirt. And then you say the sense part, and he's like, okay, well. That's... 
Fuck you, Bones. <laughs> it's like... He, he, he gives on the whole sensing part, but, like, the seeing part is like... Just hide it. Like... You're wearing, like, four layers of robes, Matashtai. Um, no I'm not. I have... A vest, poofy pants, and a cloak. You don't have. You're not wearing it. The vest is just touching skin. It's, yeah, it's vest on skin. Like I'm like I, I'm dressed like Aladdin, but in all white. You're you did it, wow. Did it, did it. <laughs> vest on skin action over here. <laughs> I thought Matashtai was a little more refined than that, but okay, never mind. No, hell not refined. <laughs> Look, I mean, I look, I I zoom in on his little like scenario, and he looks classy. What are you talking about? Are you saying Aladdin doesn't look classy? No, Aladdin does not look classy. Fuck off. <laughs> He's a street rat for a reason, and the wow, reason is yeah. his fashion sense. That's that's the if reason. If you're looking at the if you're looking at the icon, like I always forget he has the little like upper arm sleeve there. Oh, I always envision him as like an actual just like. A vest with like open arms. Okay, all right. I feel, I feel you. I mean, yeah, I don't think like the tool I, reason to make those tokens had that as an option. I need to. I need to grab a drink. I will be back in like less than thirty seconds. March. Um. <sighs> okay. I so, really do think they. Go ahead. No, go ahead. A, no, I think it's a good. I think that's a really good point. If they see, you know, or they sense that we have the anti snake people vestiges on us, that's pretty much going to kill any opportunity for us to parlay. Uh, I'm going to channel that, bones here and be like, and I'm gonna I'm gonna channel this because I think this would actually be something Zach would say, uh, not because I'm trying to to DM pilot a, a PC. Um, I think Zach would actually say this. What makes you think they know what those are at all? Yeah, to be fair, they only saw... The only one who saw it was Hexakali. Yeah. They, they probably have no idea what happened. I mean, we could risk it. I mean, that could, that could be true. I mean, I, let's go say let's go say hello. Is this happening? Is this happening? Look, <laughs> Jay over there, like a, that was a big sigh. That was a no, big no, apprehensive no, 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 no. sigh, my man. Someone, someone's <laughs> afraid of his backstory. That is not the case. But yeah, sure. Yep, it's happening. I would like to stun the fear out of ashes. Okay. Uh, first roll and attack. Okay. Hold up, I did not have my sheet open. Punch. Pretty sure I miss. Pretty sure that's a miss. Uh, if it, play, it plays up my armor class for fear. Then, I'm pretty yeah. sure. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Ashes is growing used to. I imagine Matashta is one of those like guys who just occasionally will be like, "Wap, wap, wap." Yeah. Wap, wap. My axe kick him. Like, you axe kick him? What the fuck? Like, Ashes is just used to your bullshit. He's just like, he's kind of doing the almost like the parent to the child type scenario where he's just like defending against you without actually paying entire attention to you while he's having a conversation with Ezra and Bones. All right. Like out of the, out of his periphery, he's just like, no. No. All right, Teen Wolf. You get away this time. Teen Wolf. <laughs> Where's I'm my Shakira sure, video? I'm pretty sure Ashes is like in chain. his 30s or some shit. How old is Ashes actually? No, he's I younger. Think he's, like, he's, he's just under 30, I believe. I, I have it. Who's the yeah. oldest person in the group? Uh, 28. Um, yeah, uh, Matt's also 28. Hey! Uh... 
I don't know that I don't know that Bones has a listed age. Wow. Like, I wow. mean, he's a cat. Like, he's just hanging out, right? Like, he lives until he's like twenty-one. Yeah, right? he's That's he's our, oh he's twenty-five. Sorry, he does have a listed age. My bad. He is twenty-five. Yeah, Ashes, you and I are the old ones. Wow. Right? wow. It's funny. I, I was like, hey, since I'm oldest in the group, maybe I'll just roll a younger character and be like 28. That's everyone bit. rolled younger than you. God damn it. <laughs> oh my god. Also, can we talk about? I always forget how fucking tall and lanky Bones is. Yeah, Bones he's is like six six. six. Yeah, somewhat, yeah. He's six six and a hundred and fifty pounds. That motherfucker has like Jesus. hollow bones. Jesus. Right? Yeah. Hollow like, bones and not a little ounce of muscle on him. Right. He is I know what that's like. He's a lanky cat boy over there. Alright, okay. Um, is this happening? Do you guys do you guys are you you're gearing up to go you're gonna go meet the scourges. You're gonna be like, okay. Fuck it, we're gonna we're gonna go. Ashes needs to talk to him anyways. We're gonna go suss out this situation. If we need to, we can always fight our way back out and then figure out a way to permanently deal with them later. Right? You're right. So, so let's let's just like get our story straight before we go in. We're gonna be like, hey, we're adventurers. We're we're just you know going through the floors helping people out that have problems. You want help with? Maybe a giant bone snake? Or maybe you start by, hey, I'm looking for my friend. I think Bones parrots that. He goes, why don't you just yeah. ask them about Dog Dad, like, straight up? How about we compromise? We just say, hey. <laughs> I say, hey. I say, hey. <laughs> What's <laughs> going on? <laughs> I said, hey. Do, 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 do. I, didn't, I didn't know if opening do, 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 do. with, like, Dog Dad... Is, you know, that's just kind of like a me thing. But I thought that was, you know, I was thinking on a more of a, like a everyone thing. Yeah, but it's honest, right? Like, we're not lying mm -hmm. or anything like that. We're there because you want to ask about Dog Dad. And okay. then... Right. By the way. <laughs> All right, cool. We see what well, happens, well, right? Well, like, well, if well, they're well. immediately like, ah, ha, 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 you, you will be here forever. Then we're like, okay. Evil. Clearly bad. Uh, they they better talk like that, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, Mitch over there just made did the French laugh. Ha 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 Poisson. Get out of here. I feel tella. Baguette. Poisson. Poisson. Cro croissant. Hey Dad, could you get me a oui. croissant? <laughs> That fucking video is good. Okay, anyways, um, do you guys need to do anything uh, before you leave? Uh, do you need to talk to the Bullywugs? Is there any um, things that you want to set in motion? Any situations, situations? What's the plan? Yes. If we're not uh, back in a month, send Link. How, 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 do, do we have an idea of how long until uh, our items refresh? Oh, uh, let me check this uh, schedule real quick. Just chopper, in case. Chopper, 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 chopper. Um, Dom schedule. Dungeon of the Mad Mage schedule. Schedule. It is Hammer in the year 1493. That's... Um, it is Ew. um, it is uh probably about eleven p. Um, and six a.m. is dawn. Uh, yeah. So we could fuck around for seven uh, seven hours to... I don't know who all has stuff with charges. I know I've got the Hasnarketa that I is mean. down. I know Bones has his Ring of Invisibility and... 
I think he's still think got he... charges on it. He used one. I there, think, there was today. there was something else he was asking about, so I don't know if he's got something else on his sheet that's double check. Also a dawn thing. If no one if no one else has anything that that matters, that's fine. I just I know he was being conscientious of it as well. Sure. I have the healing staff and the ethereal staff. Are they both at max right now? Um. So the I think the healing staff is still fine. Double check. He's got the Ring of Brief Blessing and I think his Troll King's Poison as well. Yeah. Healing Staff is full, but I did use Ethereal Step. Oh, yeah. Okay. So those, so those are just like nice to haves, but against the poison resistant uh, uh, fucking Spirit Nagas, probably not something that matters too terribly much. I'm just posing the question. No, I feel you. He will he will go with the flow when it when it comes to that situation. Um, so, uh, do you guys want to try to wait around for recharges on things, or do you feel comfortable? Is there anything? That, uh, is it like uh, we should be safe because these things could get us out of a bind, or is it like eh, they would just be nice to have type situation? Opinions, ideas, thoughts, direction. Wow. Do, 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 do. I'm, thinking about, I'm, I'm thinking about as good to go as I'm going to be. Yeah, I think same. Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. Uh, no further instructions to the um, Bullywugs. Uh, Culp um, nods to you. Luck. Safe. Uh, I look at him and I tell him I I have a uh, companion, a a little creature, a friend. His name is Seltzor. He resides in my in our manner up in Waterdeep. If we do not make it back, send a message to Troll Skull Manor to him. It's been an honor. Culp kind of like gives you the big like, uh, that's he heavy. Okay. That before we went in to talk to Yerk. <laughs> Yerk, Yerk didn't scare me. Wow. Yatta. Okay. I also didn't know he was a deaf slotty. That's true. I thought he was some <laughs> some bully wug bully. A bully bully. With a badass name, but. <laughs> Really, I just give I just give Bullywug's names like the Lord of Fetid Obliteration. I knew he was a really strong Bullywug. I didn't know. Okay. Um, you guys make your way make back way. to that ruined temple where you had met Yoastel. You can hear the sound of perpetual heavy rain coming from the eastern tunnels, the tunnels directly east of this ruined temple. Um, and then there is the passage southward uh, that um, leads further into the darkness, further towards the territory of the Bethian churches. How are you guys going about um, entering into this new territory? Oh, What's assume the by plan? Walking. Are you sneaking in? Are you walking out front with your arms held high? Sword hands peaceful up. Peaceful gesture, right? Like, or anything in between, right? What is What is your intention here? How do you want to go about doing this? 
I vote sneak. I'm not good as bad. I'm not. I'm fine with staying with Ashes 30 feet back. And and by that, I mean Ashes is 30 feet away and I'm 10 feet behind him. That's... Bones will be like... We're sneaking. I can sneak. We know. You're very good at it. He is the knight. He was born in the darkness. Molded by it. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I mean, if uh, people want to be stealthy, be stealthy. I initiate stealth mode. Um, okay. Bones will also initiate stealth mode. I become the knight. Uh, you know what? All right. I'm not actually sneaking with them. I just want to see. You're still trying to be sneaky despite your... Uh... But I think Bones goes a... goes full like Rambo scenario where he like breaks off a reed, submerges yeah. himself in the water, and just like, and you guys, he's fucking gone. He doesn't make a motion in the water. You cannot tell. The only reason you guys know where he is at any given moment is because you 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 follow the fucking reed as it's moving. And it's hard to follow, too, because he, like, runs it through other reeds and it kind of, like, hides for a moment. And you're like, oh, shit, I've lost him. Like, he's playing cups or some shit, you know? Like, you're not you're not entirely convinced Bones exists anymore. The rest of you, on the other hand... <laughs> um... You start to head south. We do it. Um, is it uh, Matashtai out front with uh, Ashes and Ezra a little ways behind? Correct. Um, yeah. Jer Jer Jeremy, I, so. I explicitly said that Ashes was 30 feet away and I was 10 feet behind him. I mean, put yourself where you want to be, Boyo. You good? He explicitly uh, said Jeremy. explicitly explicitly here ah uh, you motherfucker go away <laughs> matashtai you uh are slinking through the water uh moving past this choke point um you Let's see how this goes Uh, the water here begins to deepen pretty rapidly ahead of you. Um, you realize if it continues, you're going to be up to your chest uh, pretty quickly. Bibbity bobbity out of my pocket in a canoe. <laughs> okay um here's what was gonna happen but it happens as this happens right you see to the south of you there is a a ridge right a kind of like a sunken passageway uh, uh there's a dry ledge uh covering a ridge of stones in the south um and then there's more open space with water to the southeast of you. Um, as you realize that it is getting deeper, right? Uh, and you just instinctively, because you don't care, you're not being stealthy or anything. <laughs> you... <laughs> Oh, bibbity bobbity out of my pockety a fucking canoe right as you hear two twangs oh no of crossbows and this canoe goes 
like animorph style broop, 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 <laughs> in front of you and there's this thunk, thunk, as two crossbow bolts bury themselves into the canoe that then crashes down in front of you um two bolts in its side uh roll a perception check for me real quick i'm perceiving i'm doing it uh maybe if i can find it there it is boom oh yeah that's a oh yeah okay okay the bolts bury themselves on either end of the canoe a good three to four feet to either side of you there is no way that they would have hit you their warning shots and you can see figures to the south of you on that ledge kind of peering over this what now you realize resembles a rocky fortification on that ridge um you see white hair dark skin god uh, no no <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> um, not again as as trow line that ridge they fired two warning shots at you matashtai um, which were caught by your canoe. Um, and well, now... Since I'm now a seafarer, I yell, Parlay! See, one of the figures stands up. And it says... Welcome to the Immortal Vale. My mistresses await you. And I think that is where we will end tonight's episode. Um, see, we filled out a couple hours. It went fine. <laughs> summoned a canoe when you were trying to sneak through the fucking water. Look, I rolled really poor on the sneak. <laughs> Get out of here. Alright, that's gonna be it for tonight's episode. Uh, thanks also, for watching. canoes can be silent. I don't have like a fucking 50 horsepower motor on the back end of that thing. Yeah. Just yeah. Canoeing around can be silent. Summoning a canoe into the water you don't think is gonna be a little you think loud? it comes out screaming like a banshee? No, I think, I think it goes I think it goes bloop 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 Spoosh. I think it goes bloop 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 you think, you think it's in the water and it just goes Yeah, totally. That's the one I want. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. J All Jeremy, right. don't don't forget. Thanks to our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. T thanks to our sponsor. Don't forget to download that. Odie on with these fucking your iOS paws. or Android device. Odie got these mitts over here, tapping with the claws. All right, that's gonna be it for tonight's episode. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, are we off next week? I don't think so. I don't think so. You guys are just gone here. this weekend. You're not gone uh, for an elongated. Yeah, we'll be back. Sunday. Okay, yeah, gotcha. We're, we're back so, today, so we should be back next week for more Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye bye, everybody. Use the code The Distant Horizon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv/thedistanthorizon.